So I'm Brad Parks. Again, uh, sticker and t-shirt designer is uh, what my daughter thinks I do all day. So I went with that on the, uh, on the title. You can see me at uh, Morpheus Dude if you want to hit me up online. So last year when, uh, when we did this, um, I used a, a reference to kind of establish this concept of cloud um, you know, in our vernacular. And uh, yesterday when I was meeting with Dave Estes, he asked what my Princess Bride reference was going to be this year. It is the movie by which I think almost everything in life can be explained. But I, uh, I decided to mix it up and this year uh, went with something else. I don't know if any of the delegates in the room know this one. It's a little esoteric. It's a little weird if you're a David Bowie fan. But um, this quote uh, may have been from you know, the last guy who tried to navigate provisioning his application uh, in a hybrid cloud environment um, or could have been from the main character in The Labyrinth. So for those of you who guessed Labyrinth, you're, you're on point. Um, you know, Labyrinth is a pretty good way to describe what Morpheus sees when we're dealing with large enterprises and service providers every day when it comes to kind of modernizing applications and navigating the complex set of you know, infrastructure tasks that it takes to go from a development team, a business unit wanting a thing right, to getting back what they requested. You know, at its heart, a lot of that is what's been driving, uh, you know, public cloud growth over the last decade is, you know, people just tired of waiting to navigate the complexity of on-premises infra, right? Um, it's not just rack and stacking an HCI node or cloning a VM, right? It is the end-to-end -end operational complexity of every tool, every process, every team that has to touch those service requests. And uh, as companies have, you know, expressed aspirational desires to transform themselves and become software companies, it's just shined a giant spotlight on, you know, on the train wreck and technical debt that is in a lot of well-established enterprises. So that's, you know, nothing new to this delegate panel, nothing new, you know, I'm sure to a lot of the folks on the stream, but it is surprisingly or not, still something we bump into every day at very large name brand companies. It's a constant problem. Uh, and it's not just the tooling and the time that it takes. Um, you know, when you think about the different folks who are engaged in that hybrid IT landscape, you know, you've got development teams, right, who are worried about uh, releases per day, you know, getting the speed and agility, obviously. Um, their kind of control plane or their, a lot of their optic, you know, they're struggling with, you know, how do we embrace and get to infrastructure as code? You know, how are we managing platform transitions? On the kind of traditional IT or cloud ops side, right, the, just the pace of change has been, uh, been very difficult. It's something we still see skills gaps as people are struggling with navigating on-premises changes as well as public clouds. Um, the tooling that often comes to bear there is, you know, you get traditional VM automation, things like be realized, you got, hey, do I just go public cloud native, but what do I do when I've got two or three different teams using two or three different clouds, then, you know, my guys have to learn, you know, different ways to slice and dice the world, um, you know, where and how do we, do we fit that mix. Finance, certainly uh, in the economic reality we're living with in mid 2020, finance has an even stronger view of, you know, where workloads should land and what the economics are of that. You know, what's the tooling that they use to, to navigate multi-cloud and hybrid cloud. And then, you know, security, you can't, you can't forget the cost of non-compliance. Um, what we see when we're engaging with very large enterprises is there is a, ton of overlap in a lot of these technologies. And as a, you know, I was a customer, you know, 15 years ago, long enough, I can't even relevantly call myself uh, technically <laughs> oriented from a customer perspective, but I wouldn't want to be one today. Cause I think if I navigate the various websites and vendor speak from, you know, infra as code folks, from container technologies, from CMPs, from VM automation companies, they all look and sound very, very similar. And I think that's because there are so many different ways to knit together the workflows and the handoffs between technology components and between all of the people that are engaged. So what I'd like to spend a little bit of time is just kind of going through our, you know, our own point of view and kind of how we, how we approach that. So, First of all, we, you know, we fundamentally believe there has to be a different approach than, you know, stringing together these disconnected things via a mountain of manual scripting and just human middleware. 
Um, too often we see two different conversations happening though when we start to engage with clients. Um, there's the kind of cloud conversation where things live and the platform conversation, how are they structured? And, and we think too often those are kind of thought of separately. Um, a little bit on where we got our start and why we, you know, why we're relevant here. We didn't start, you know, as a product company trying to monetize or, or fit a given market segment. Uh, Dave Estes, who's on the line, will be with us in a couple of the sessions. One of our co-founders, he and about 30 of his compatriots um, started out as a engineering transformation team inside a one and a half billion dollar private equity company. And they spent about a decade transforming IT at companies that were being bought and sold to make them more efficient, modernize their apps, apply governance and do it very, very quickly with a very lean operating model. As they engaged in that mission, they just didn't find a lot of the tools that they needed to go get their job done. So they spent you know, close to 10 years and tens of thousands of app deployments creating tooling for themselves to not get in each other's way and to move very quickly. Um, it was only about five years ago that Morpheus kind of took that DNA and, and kind of sprang out of it. And some of the things that kind of our core to, to our thought process, right? First, cloud is, is an experience. It's something that's elastic and on-demand. It's not bespoke to on-prem, public, or edge. It, it's a way of consuming uh, infra, infra and deploying apps. Uh, first, everyone's a snowflake, or second, everyone's a snowflake, right? Every company that we walk into has a slightly different view of how they string together those workflows. And then, you know, last, it's an ongoing effort. You can't just think about your world as my greenfield container deployment or just my VM infrastructure. Um, you're constantly updating these platform technologies. So that gets to Morpheus, right? What's our ethos? What are, what are we about? So we're all about hybrid cloud you know, app orchestration. And when we think about that from a category perspective, we have a, a foot in you know, what is often categorized as cloud management. And I'm going to unpack that. And we have a foot in, uh, in the continuous automation space. It doesn't and make it neat and tidy from a you know, Gartner nomenclature MQ perspective. But when we're engaging with customers, I think it is what makes us relevant when they're trying to tackle the, you know, the sum of the parts that I was highlighting earlier. Those workflows, those teams, and that tooling spans enough domains that you have to think about things a little bit differently. In terms of what you know, kind of what we want to shine a spotlight technically over the next 90 minutes and in some of the other sessions. First, we're a, you know, we're a unified platform. We do bring together the elements in a unique way so that you're not having to bounce all around um, either as teams or as tools. Second, um, you know, we're agnostic. I think multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, you know, I've seen and read, you know, a lot of the, uh, the delegates here have, have done a lot of talking around hybrid versus multi. I think it's a reality that you're going to get whether you consciously walked into it or not as an enterprise, just by virtue of you know M and A, different teams doing different things. It's here, and and you have to have a, a structure that that lets you deal with that at scale. And then lastly, I want to highlight kind of where we are as a platform technology in terms of responding to change. We do a lot of things out of the box. It's honestly one of the things that that uh, makes us great, but we're also very modular, very responsive, and have a, a rich automation. Uh, engine to build from to, to round out the edges and to deal with the unexpected because there's always something unexpected. So I, I mentioned personas earlier. When we kind of think about who we talk to in these large accounts, we often play organizational psychologists as much as we do, you know, tech vendor because you got silos, you got infighting, you got different perspectives. I want to kind of walk through who we deal with and what parts of the stack we're going to uh, kind of exposed to them and what kind of value we can bring. And core to everything we do is, you know, the classic IT function or, you know, what's now, you know, the guys doing the cloud operations, um, both building successfully, I'll say private clouds, as well as standardizing how teams deal with an increasing number of public clouds. Um, so we'll shine a spotlight in the technical demos on how we're able to very, very quickly um, turn, you know, hypervisor stacks, bare metal stacks into private clouds. Um, applying some of that same automation and simplicity to Kubernetes management and turning all of that ultimately into a, a service catalog experience that can be consumed via you know, API, CLI, GUI, ITSM tool, whatever the trigger is 
uh, providing that out. But other folks have a have a stake in that hybrid cloud infra, uh, you know, as highlighted earlier. Security, you know, we've got to have the right governance around those cloud endpoints, the right tenancy model, lifecycle policy, um, you know, all the way down to actual, you know, security scanning. So we're going to shine a spotlight in the the demos around what we're bringing to bear to address the the needs of the security function. They may not be going into Morpheus as their primary day-to-day -day work engine, but we need to make sure their hierarchy of needs is met if you're going to successfully navigate you know, hybrid IT as an enterprise. And the third persona that, that you know, really has a stake in this is, is the dev team. Um, Adam Hicks, our field CT, who's going to be on a little bit later. I'm going to steal one of his one-liners. Um, he often says Morpheus is a gift that the uh, IT team buys. Uh, for their dev teams, right? It gets IT out of the way, uh, but we have to do that in a structure that, that really meets developer needs. Oftentimes tooling is too biased towards any one of these personas. You know, Classic IT might love it, but the dev team's gonna shy away because it's not meeting their needs in their pipeline or it's being very opinionated and forcing them to do something they you know, they may not want to do. So I want to shine a spotlight in the demo on how we're addressing the needs of the development community. Um, and then lastly, I mentioned earlier, finance, you know, has a stake in everything uh, even more now than, uh, than six months ago. So some of the capabilities we want to highlight is, you know, discovering brownfield instances in these messy environments, helping to just clean that up, ingest, optimize, manage their projects, you know, get to show back or shame back, depending on, on where you are as an enterprise. These are the kind of the personas that we think about that are consuming the Morpheus platform. And over the course of the follow on sessions, we're going to pick these apart and go into kind of the technical depth of how we're delivering on, on those feature sets. So that's- Brad, I have a quick question. Yeah. So you're talking about uh, uh, at least four different areas in which you operate. Is this a single product or uh, are they four different products deployed it's a, on no, premises? It's a, yeah, it's a good question. We are a single product. We do have a very modular licensing architecture. And also we've, we've kind of gone back and forth a little bit. I'll be, be kimono open. You know, right? We can turn on and off pretty much every part of the stack uh, by license. Um, and so we're trying to find a balance between death by a thousand cuts, you know, classic enterprise software licensing model and, and all inclusive. Uh, today, we, we are deployed all inclusive, but we have people who consume different pieces of the stack. The one thing I'd say though is core to all of our, our deployments, managing private cloud and public cloud and turning that into a self-service catalog experience is the common denominator. Don't think about these as bespoke product stacks. I know, you know, other, other vendors do, right? They've got totally different development teams doing disconnected things. These are the, the consumers of our stack. And when we go through the demo, I think you'll see how they, they really have to be tied together coherently to, to get to an effective platform strategy as an enterprise. And so that's something I'll, I'll commit to paying off or I'll, I'll write a check that the smarter guys in the session are going to have to go pay off. But, um, you know, if we're grounded in this concept of self-service, we need to meet the needs of, you know, that SecOps team, but we're not going to be a specific tool for him, right? We need to aggregate the data and provide uh, an interface for the finance team, but we're not a FinOps tool. So don't conflate these personas with kind of product, if you will. Okay. Does that make sense? And I get hopefully okay. more as we go through. Um, I got a <clears throat> question. Um, so you you said earlier that you're a multi-cloud and hybrid cloud. Mm -hmm. So I see that uh, you, you talk about the on-prem and private for private clouds, and <clears throat> you just uh, say standardized public cloud as a singular. Do you support multi-cloud environment in conjunction with the private cloud or how does that work? Yeah, so kind of one layer down, I guess, from a abstraction model and then the different automation elements we're gonna to touch on in the, in the demo, we've built out abstractions for just about every piece of that, um, you know, application lifecycle and the different pieces that have to be touched to bring an application service to life or application centric in that way, not specific to a VM or a, you know, Kubernetes or anything else, but we've built out these abstractions and then out of the box integrations into, you know, 
most of the tooling that we see in data centers today. So this represents kind of how people are bringing those application stacks to life. The other dimension to your question is where are those being provisioned into? And uh, we support, you know, arguably the broadest set of cloud endpoints uh, of anyone in this space. And when we say cloud, right, back to kind of NIST definition, elastic and on demand, right? So that could be and should be your vSphere environment, right? Should be AHV, could be a bare metal cluster, definitely as things like Kubernetes, OpenStack. So a lot of our customers are using us, you know, dominated by their on-prem workloads, but at the same time, we're gonna give them a, a lens to standardize how they're provisioning into public cloud as well. Um, I only bring this up, not because, uh, you know, Gartner stats are what makes uh, field day delegates uh, giddy, but more to shine a spotlight on when, uh, you know, when they did their analysis, which they did for the first time last year, there were 90 different vendors that kind of self-identified as having some piece of, of cloud management. It is probably one of the ugliest and messiest markets that I've ever been a part of as a customer or vendor. Um, and, uh, and it's interesting when you look at the, the use cases that, um, that come out when we're talking to customers. Um, it's definitely an area that's, it's the wild west. I kind of like it, it's fun as a, you know, as a guy who, who likes telling stories, but um, as a customer, it's, uh, there's definitely a lot of ways to skin this cat. And so um, you know, there are a lot of products, not just these on the screen, but, but really others that are in adjacencies that we integrate with that, that also have a stake in this, um, many of which you have been on, on field day. A couple other questions that always come up outside of just the product demo real quick. Um, so we're not SaaS, right? We're a software install, right? We, uh, we install on, on Linux. Most of our customers are installing it on-prem because that's where most of their workloads are. And then they're you know, reaching up into their public cloud accounts. It takes about 15 minutes to install, it's very fast. Um, after that, you're adding and integrating clouds, and we do that out of the box. We've got people, you know, fully functioning in POCs with VMware in less than an hour. That's like, you know, I'd be mad if it took more than that. We're licensed by, you know, the app workload, right? We think about the app. So it's not, you know, infra and IPs. It's how many application services are we managing? So that could be VMs, could be clustered VMs, could be container deployments, could be public cloud PaaS services. We normalize around the application service. Um, and then uh, I'd like you guys to go download it. So some way we, we talked about our last field day and it, it, it got made real uh, since then. So go get yourself some Morpheus and, and have a play and reach out and let us know how it goes. Um, I'll send this out offline uh, and that, uh, but hopefully that gets you going.